guys. So I'm back with a really interesting and important property. Uh, the property is actually not really um, geometrically or physically understandable in my viewpoint, but there can be some um, aspect to it. If you know it, if you understand, please let me know in the comments. So the property is this. It's a more sort of an al algebraic format for me. It's covariance of y bar comma beta one hat is equal to zero. That means sort of y bar and beta one hat are sort of uh, perpendicular to each other in terms of uh, linearity, okay? Linear, like linear uh, dependence. So y bar and x, uh, beta one hat bar, like sort of not related to each other, uh, like they are perpendicular to each other. So let's prove this property, okay? So let's write it down. So we remember, I hope you remember, beta one hat is summation of x i minus x bar into y i by s x x okay and what is y bar y bar is 1 by n summation of y i okay so what do you get from here you get that you need to you need to understand that what what we are planning over here we are planning to do covariance so it's actually covariance okay with the random variables over here y i follows some distribution of expectation beta naught plus beta one xi comma sigma squared. It's expectation of y. Understand this very carefully. What we are doing. What is covariance of y bar? Covariance of y bar is actually y bar minus expectation of y bar times beta one hat minus expectation of beta one hat. So this is a bit longer sort of calculation. So try to understand this very carefully. So this is the relationship over here. So we'll do it step by step. So let's do y bar minus expectation of y bar. So yi follows some expectation of yi is what? It's beta naught plus beta one x i and expectation of y bar will be what? One by n beta naught, but we will not do it that way. We'll do it in a different way. Also that y i is equal to beta naught plus beta one x i plus epsilon i. So y bar, we know that y bar will be equal to beta naught plus beta one x bar plus epsilon bar, right? So, yi minus expectation of y bar will be what? Will be, if you cancel this out, it will be essentially, this will all be gone, okay? Understand it very carefully. This will all be gone. What will be left? Will be left. So it's a y bar over here. So y bar minus expectation of, these are constants, so this will be gone only, this thing will be left. It will be epsilon bar minus expectation of epsilon bar. Expectation of epsilon bar is zero. Why? Because expectation of epsilon i is zero individually. So essentially, it's equal to epsilon bar. So y bar this is actually equal to epsilon bar. So this is the first property that we are using. Okay. And also, we need the property that expectation of epsilon bar is equal to zero. It's actually the given model property that this errors are zero. Expectation of epsilon i is zero, so summation of like one by epsilon bar is zero. Okay, so all random variables we are talking about. I hope you understood that. And next, let's carry on to the other part. So this part is done. So we got this is the same as expectation of epsilon bar times beta one hat minus expectation of beta one hat, which is beta one. Okay, let me drop this off. I'm not sure. Maybe this will again go away. No, it's not going away. That's good. <laughs> so, B1, yeah, that's it. Now, let's try to understand this expression. Okay. So, we'll come back here again. So, let's add some page to it. And let's do it. So, beta 1 hat is what? Summation of xi minus x bar by sx yi is equal to summation of alpha i yi. 
okay where alpha is equal to s x i minus x bar by s x x i hope you understood that so this is sort of a constant because it's terms of x it's these are all random variables okay try to understand this now so we know that expectation of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1 so what will happen over here why why i is what again so we are trying to express everything in terms of epsilon i okay because we have the property expectation of epsilon i is zero that's the reason so plus beta 1 xi plus epsilon i so if we replace that here what we will get we get summation of alpha i beta naught plus alpha i beta 1 xi plus alpha i epsilon i right so what we will get in essentially we will get the following we will get beta 1 hat minus beta 1 is actually equal to summation of alpha i beta naught plus summation of alpha i beta 1 xi plus summation of alpha i epsilon i minus beta 1. Okay. There is an epsilon bar attached to it now. With epsilon bar over here is to find this. So what is this? It can be written as summation. Observe that these are all constant. Okay. So this is all constant. Okay. So therefore, it's summation of this times epsilon bar plus this is also constant. And this is not constant. This is something else. But this is constant. So we have been left with epsilon bar summation of alpha i epsilon i okay we are left with this now next what observe that what we got we got we have this expectation out here epsilon bar into beta 1 hat so let me revise what we got over here we have got y bar minus expectation of y bar times beta 1 hat minus beta expectation of beta 1 hat from here we told that expectation of epsilon bar times beta 1 hat minus expectation of beta which is beta 1 we have understood this and we have replaced this expectation of this sort of ideas so it's sort of some constant k into epsilon bar minus epsilon bar or is it minus it's plus so it's plus epsilon bar times summation of alpha i i guess it's alpha yeah, alpha I epsilon i okay it's now this now if you take expectation linear of expectation by linear of expectation what you get you get summation of alpha I epsilon i this is zero why because expectation of epsilon bar is zero so we are left with the idea of expectation of alpha bar times summation of alpha i xi. Now we'll need one property of alpha i over here. What is alpha i? Alpha is x i minus x bar, right? By s x x. So summation of alpha i will be equal to zero because summation of x i minus x bar equal to zero. It's one of the important properties we need. So what we will get over here? Let's try to understand that. So for that, let's try to break it up epsilon bar into summation of alpha i this is actually equal so i this is the summation of j 1 by n epsilon j times summation of i alpha i epsilon i this sounds sort of like this 1 by n terms some 1 plus dot 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 epsilon n times alpha 1 epsilon 1 plus alpha 2 epsilon 2 plus dot 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 epsilon n of alpha and epsilon n so it's actually equal to what? Actually equal to 1 by n summation of alpha i epsilon i epsilon j dot i j. Okay. Try to understand this very carefully. So I hope you all understood this. So what we get from here? We get really something really beautiful. We need the actual properties now. So what we got that expectation of that 
uh, y bar minus expectation of y bar, the actual thing, rather the covariance, we'll write the covariance as better. So covariance of y bar from a beta one hat, we got that as what? We got that as expectation one by n expectation of summation of i comma j epsilon i alpha i epsilon j okay so we got this so now what we will do we will break this as alpha 1 plus alpha epsilon 1 plus epsilon n into alpha 1 epsilon 1 plus dot dot, dot alpha and epsilon n we will break this as two parts just like normal stuff summation of alpha i epsilon i square the square parts plus the parts that are, in, are not equal. So i not equal to j over i epsilon i. Okay, so we'll divide it like this. Perfect. So now it's one step. So if you take expectation over here, if you take expectation over here, expectation of alpha i, summation of alpha i epsilon i square, observe that it's actually equal to summation of alpha i, so alpha is constant, expectation of epsilon i square. Epsilon i square, expectation of epsilon i square actually equal to variance of epsilon i, which is equal to summation, sigma square into summation of alpha i. Now we'll use the property of summation of alpha i equal to zero, so it will turn out to be zero. This is turns out to be zero. What's extra next here? Next here is this something really beautiful. We need all the properties of epsilon i over here. Expectation of Let's not write it here, let's write it here. Expectation of summation of i not equal to j alpha i, this is what? This is summation of i not equal to j alpha i, expectation of this. This is what? Since expectation of epsilon i and j are all zero, that means this is equal to summation of i not equal to j alpha i, covariance of epsilon i, epsilon and j. Epsilon i, epsilon j are independent so their covariance is zero therefore this turns out to be zero too therefore this turns out to be zero too and that's what we want right very good so let's revise the steps once so covariance of y bar comma beta one hat we showed that it's actually equal to covariance of this comma beta one hat okay and we expanded this summing expectation of this times beta one hat minus beta one because of the expectation and we observe that this is sum of some constant epsilon bar plus summation of plus epsilon bar times summation of alpha i epsilon i. We got something like this and from here we got that it's actually zero this part Expectation of that part is zero, so we got expectation of epsilon bar alpha i. And in the previous slide, we divided into two parts where it's expectation of summation of alpha i epsilon i square, which got it to zeros by the property summation of alpha i equal to zero. And here we got that expectation of summation of alpha i, i not equal to j, alpha i epsilon i epsilon j. We got it to zero by covariance of epsilon i, epsilon j being zero, since they're independent. So he, therefore, we got it equal to zero. So therefore, proof. It's a longer bit of video, but it's a very important property as we will see soon. So stay tuned, stay blessed, and in the next videos, we will calculate the variance of beta not hat, beta one hat, the covariance of beta not hat, and beta one hat. Bye-bye, and see you.